There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain. I told us when we began this family focus on the family. I said the family is so important. If there is instability in the family, there will be instability in the church. If there is instability in the family, for sure the society will have instability. The government, everything will be unstable. And that is why the devil is fighting the family. Amen? Mm -hmm. That is the reason. So today we are going to, to talk on that. And how can you deal with your relatives without knowing who is a relative? If I ask now who is a relative. So I want us to see this definition. The first one is filial relation. A person related to you by blood, which is birth or adoption. This can include brother, <coughs> sister, nephew, niece, aunt, uncle, and grandparents. Amen? Amen. So by blood. But also we know that if you adopt a child, that's your child. You don't need to say it's your child. Amen? Amen. So the second one is marriage. Marriage relation. A person related to you by marriage, this includes in-laws. You are married to somebody and all of our families, you call them my in-law, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law. So it includes all of them. Then you have national relations. Well, don't go and check it in a book to see what is in You will not find it there. So if you use it, you have to quote what communication ministry. You got this from there. <laughs> national relations. These are persons related to you because you were born in the same hometown, village, region, or nation, and with whom you share the same language. You hear your friends come and tell you, I'm going to my country meeting. We have the Bangwa meeting today. Those of us from Boya, we say we have the Boya meeting. Amen? Amen. People from the same area. Then faith relations. These are people you are related with because you share the same faith with them. This includes all born again believers. And I want to read very fast Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10. It says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. Amen? Amen. If you have opportunity to do good, do it especially to the family, this family like this. That's why I love this family. Amen? Amen. It's a strong family. If you take it lightly, that's your problem, but you should take it seriously, the family of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And there are some problems common amongst relatives. And I want us to say this. See them? Common problems among relatives. And the first, we have four points there. The first one is anger against each other. And Genesis chapter 4 and verse 5 says, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Two brothers, they went to present their offering to God. One offering went as a sweet smelling <coughs> incense before God. God was very pleased. That of Abel. But as I have read, with that of Cain, God did not look upon it with favor. God wasn't happy with it. So he became very angry and downcast. Common problem, anger amongst, against each other. Number two, infighting and grudges for prominent position in the family. E.g., Jacob and Esau. Genesis chapter 27 and 41 says, Esau held grudge against Jacob, 
because of the blessings his father has given him. He said to himself, the days of mourning for my father are near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. He said, my father is old. He's near his grave. When he dies, I will finish this guy. I will eliminate him. He took my birthright and he think that I would, I would let him go like that. Prominent position. In fighting, in the family, in the relation. That's what happened. Jealousy and hatred for each other. E.g. Joseph and his brothers. God gave him a dream. God showed him how he would be in the future. He came and shared it with them. And this is what they said. 37 and verse 8. His brothers said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Amen? Amen. Be careful to say your dreams to people. Amen? Mama. They hated it. And we know the story. They wanted to kill him. If not for his brother who came and intervened, another brother who came and said, please, don't, don't, don't take the life of this guy. This is our brother. So they negotiated at the end, they said, okay, let's send him. From the pit, they remove him and they said, let's send him. And that's how he got his victory. Got from the pit to where? To the, king, to where? To the king's palace. To the palace, from the pit. That's what happened. And we see, covetousness over the right to inherit family property. The brothers in Jesus' parable, in the book of Luke, Jesus gave two parables. The first one, um, Luke chapter 12, 13 to 15, one guy came and said, Jesus, tell my brother to divide the family property. Jesus said, who has made me judge? Then he, he left that part and said, you should know that a man's life doesn't cost, consist of what he owns, his possession. Amen? Amen. I should watch out, but I'm going to read it. Luke chapter 12, 13 to 15 says, Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possession. It's not what you have that is really called life. That's what he was telling them. He said, but nobody has made me a judge. And in the second parable is about the prodigal son. This man had two sons. One came to him and said, share the property. The man decided to share it to them. He went, squandered everything. Bible said he spent his money with prostitutes. At the end, he came back. But his father with love still received him. Amen? Amen. But we know his brother wasn't happy. His brother was not happy with him. But we have seen four things. Common problem amongst relatives. Anger against each other. Infighting and grudge for permanent position in the family. Jealousy and hatred for each other. Covetousness, covetousness over the right to inherit family property. There's another thing I want us to see. Relatives can give good and bad advice. Amen? Amen. Relatives can give good and bad advice. Number one, Job's wife advised him to cause God and die. And one preacher, I think his name is um, Reverend Chidi Okarowa from Nigeria, said, this is the first time I've seen a woman who was ready to become an emergency widow. Your husband is alive. You say, cause God and I want to be without a man. Cause God and I. Job's wife. That was the advice he gave the husband. It says, Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast 
to your integrity, cause God and die. Verse 10 says, But he said to her, you, you speak as one of the foolish women speak. Shall we indeed accept good from God, and shall we not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Amen? Yes. He did not sin. He rebuked the woman. So if you are married, don't take bad advice from your wife or from your husband. Amen? Amen? When they come, rebuke them. Give it heart unto them. Just like he said, when God was blessing us, you were happy. Now you, we are suffering. You don't want to accept the suffering. Good or not good, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. There's one man who says, shoe or no shoe, Jesus is Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. He is Lord yes. in bad times and in mm -hmm. good times. Amen. 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 David expresses sorrow because his closest friends, relatives left him. In that portion of the Bible, he was in trouble. He expected his friends to come around him and say, Comfort him, give, act as a source of comfort, but they did not. I want to read it. Psalms 38, verse 11 says, My loved ones and my friends stand aloof from my lake, my, and my relatives stand afar off. Far, my relatives. His relatives, they were far from him. So, relatives can be good and bad. And, and, Relatives can give good and bad advice. Moses listened to the advice of his father-in-law, Jethro. Jethro was the father-in-law of Moses. One day, Moses just stood up and said, I'm going to see how the Israelites in Egypt they are doing. He said, go. So when Jethro came and visited Moses, he saw the way Moses was handling the affairs. Moses would sit down with the people, judging them from morning till evening. The man called and said, young man, come. This is Kevin. He said, the way you are dealing with these people, you will die before your time. You will short circuit your life. Divide this job. Some simple matters, give it to some people to handle. When it is more than them, they will come to you to handle it. And Moses, Bible says, hacking or listening to his father-in-law, Jethro, and did what and did all he told him to do. Amen? Amen. Let me just read part of it. So Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Please let me go and return to my brethren who are in Egypt and see whether they are still alive. So when Moses, I skipped some verses. So Exodus 18, 14 now. So when Moses' father-in-law, Moses' father-in-law, saw all he did for the people, he said, What is this thing that you are doing for the people? Why do, why do you alone sit and all the people stand before you from morning until evening? Verse 24. So Moses heeded at the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. Amen? Amen. So there are some advices that are good. You cannot kill yourself from morning to evening judging the people. This man will come with his kids. You will judge this other one. Morning till evening, he said you will die. But when the, the power advised him, he took it and it was well. Amen? Amen. What, how many things have we seen? Three. And this is the fourth one. Relatives can give good and bad advice. Although prompted to leave, and even when her colleague Opa decided to leave, Naomi Ruth, now to leave Naomi, Ruth decided to follow Naomi. You see, one man got married to a woman called Naomi. The man died. His name was Elimelech. He died. Before he died, he had two children with Naomi. The name of one was. Um, Malion and the other was Chilion. Both of them died also after their father died, leaving their wives, Ruth and Opa. So Naomi was returning to her people. She lost the husband and her two children. She was in pain. She turned to her two daughters-in-law and said, please, you have done good to me. Even to the dead, 
the, to the dead ones. May God reward you. Go now to your own, to your mother's family. Go and may the Lord help you. But of them cried, they cried, they said, we cannot leave you. Then she interrupted and said, please, even if God will bless me with a husband today, and I deliver a child today, you people will not be patient to get married to them. Then Opa said, okay, mother law she left. <laughs> but Ruth said, I will go with you. Your God will be my God, and your people will be my people. And because of that decision I told us last week, um, Ruth fell in the lineage of Jesus, because Ruth gave birth with a man, he got married to a man called Boaz, a, 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 a very rich man. They gave birth to a child called Obed. And if you look the lineage, she went up to David and Jesus Christ, just because she followed the mother in him. Amen? Amen. So we have seen these things. And another thing we'll consider today is how can I, how can a believer deal with relatives? How can you deal with relatives? We've seen a lot, the definition and how they can give good and bad advice. Now, how can we deal with them? How can we? And be, I have to read that long passage. And if you don't follow the reading, you might not understand because there are one, two, three, four, five, six principles I'm going to take out from this story. Six. Genesis 13, 1 to 18. It's very long, but follow. Then nobody distracts you. Then Abraham went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot with him to the south. Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abram called the name of the Lord. Lord also who went with Abram had flocks and heads and tents. Now the land was not able to support them that they might dwell together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was, was strife between the headsmen of Abram's livestock and the headsmen of Lot's li livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites then dwelt in the land. So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me, and between my headsmen and your headsmen, for we are brethren. Is it not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will take the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. And Lord lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan. And it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord like the land of Egypt as you, as you go towards Zohar. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in, in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. And the Lord said to Abraham, After, follow. And the Lord said to Abraham, After Lord had separated from him, Lift up your, you lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are, north, northward, southward, eastward, and westward, for. All the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could count the dust of the earth, then your descendants, could, your descendants also could be numbered. 
Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Then Abraham moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terrible tree of memory, which are in Hebron, and built an altar there to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Quite a long reading, but necessary. So, six principles from the reading. Number one, realize that relatives are with you only for a season, only for a while. They are not there permanently. Amen? Amen. They are not there forever. You see, um, Ecclesiastes tells us, I want to read it. It says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Amen? Amen. To everything there is a season. Abraham was with Lot. Lot was Abraham's brother's son. So Abraham was to Lot um, the uncle. So Lot was Abraham's nephew. So, when they left, he also followed Abraham. They were together. So, time to be together. Time to be together. And the verse 31 says, uh, if you read the Genesis 13 um, and verse 1, we were together. So, time to be together. Number two, be willing to recognize and discern problems. Genesis 13. We have read all those, and that's why we are not going to read it again. Be willing to recognize. Abraham recognized that his headsmen were having problem with Lord's headsmen. Problem, misunderstanding. He just said, "We are brothers. Let's avoid this. This land cannot contain us any longer." But you, you see, Abraham was a wise man. You should be wise. He was a wise man. He said, you, normally the uncle should have um, decided which way to go first and leave the young guy to go his own way. He said, you, if you decide to take the left part of where we are standing, I will take the right part. If you take the right part, I will take the left. Choose. Do you know why he said so? If God wants to bless you, if you are in the wilderness, mm. God will it's meet you there, locate you yeah. and bless you there. Yes. So he told him, choose. I am a child of God. I want us to separate this fully. Choose. Bible says, not lift it up. He saw the beautiful places. He chose it. Eyes can deceive. Amen? Amen. Mm-hmm. So if you know about his life, the beautiful place he saw ended him somewhere. That wasn't good. Amen? Mm-hmm. Tell your neighbor, stop looking elsewhere. Look unto Jesus. Say it, say it. Principle number three Be willing to propose a biblical solution to the problem I also I already touched that one Be willing to propose a biblical solution The biblical solution is let us separate peacefully Peaceful separation, amen? amen. Peacefully Let's just go the way of peace Number three, be attentive to what God is saying to you. There was a place I read and said, and I said, be careful, listen well. God could only speak to Abraham, Abraham when God has separated from him. So there are some people you don't need to hang around. As long as you are around you, God will not talk. God will be Read it at home, you will understand what I mean. Because the Bible says, God spoke to Abraham after Lord had separated from him. Why did God delay to speak? Why? So be attentive to what God is saying to you. Have the spirit of the same man. Amen? Amen. God is talking now. At times we are so loud, God is talking to you with a lot of noise you cannot even hear because you think a lot, a lot, but God is talking. But we don't even listen. But be attentive. Amen? Amen. Be prepared to fight for and defend your relatives. Mm-hmm. I want to read this place. 14, 12 to 16. Follow as I read. 
12 to 16. They all took, they also took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. Then one who had escaped came and told Abraham and Abraham the Hebrew, for the for he dwelt by the Terebim tree of Memre, and the Amorite brother of Eshcol and brother of Abner, and they were allies with Abraham. Now when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his three hundred and eighteen trained servants who were born in his own house and went in pursuit as far as Dan. He divided his forces against them by night and he, he and his servants attacked them and pursued them as far as Hoba, which is north of Damascus. So he brought back all the goods and also brought back to back his brother Lot and his goods. You understand? Even though they had separated, Lot encountered problems. Some people came and attacked the city, took Lot and his goods, everything went. A messenger came to Abraham and said, some people have attacked that land, they have taken your nephew. He said, what? He armed his men. He went and pursued those people and they recovered Lot and his goods. Amen? Amen. So, no, don't be angry with your relatives. Amen? Amen? We are children of God. If we do this, it's not correct. Because Abraham had all the right to say, they should finish him even. When he was with me, he was just doing trouble, trouble, trouble. Chineke don't punish you. You understand? We are laughing, but it's true. He armed his men and said, My nephew, I must get him. And he brought him back. The spirit of a child of God. So be prepared to fight and defend your relatives. The last point is be willing to intercede for the safety of your relatives. One day, angels just appeared to Abraham. Abraham went and told the wife, make some something, some chewables for these people to eat before they, they move on. After they had finished, they were going. They were going, they were going. Lord said, should can I hide from Abraham what I'm going to do? Since he's going to be a father of many nations, I will not hide it from him. He came. As Abraham was going with them, they told him, we have heard about the evil in Sodom. We are going to destroy it. Abraham started to negotiate now. But God, if you permit me to say something, God, I know you are God, but just permit me. If you are going now to do destruction, they are, they are righteous people there and they are sinners there. Are you going to destroy the righteous with the sinners? His, his, his brother was there. His nephew was there. So he was still interceding for that guy. Amen? Amen. And the righteous people there, he started from 50. God, what about if you see 50 righteous people? Will you destroy the city because of 50 righteous? Let me just read a bit. 18, 16, going. 16. Then the men rose from there and took and looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to send them on their way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and a mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I, for I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. And the Lord said, because the outcry, because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because of their sin is very grave. I will do, I will go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that come to me. And if not, I will know. 
uh, verse 22. Then the men turned away from, from there and went towards Sodom, but Abraham still stood before the Lord. And Abraham came near and said, Would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there were 50 righteous within the city. Will you also destroy the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous that were in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? The story is long. But finally, they left him. They went. And see, Genesis chapter 19 and verse 29 says something. 1929. 29 says, And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the, of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. Amen. Amen. God remembered Lot. Amen. Amen. Because of what Abraham did. He interceded. Amen. Amen. Can you intercede for, for your stubborn relative? We will be happy to see them fall, not interceding, but that's not the right spirit. So how can a believer deal with relatives? Realize that relatives are with you only for a season. Be willing to recognize and discern problem. Be willing to propose a biblical solution to the problem. Be attentive to what God is saying to you. Be prepared to fight for the de and defend your relatives. Be willing to intercede for the safety of your relatives. So, what have we seen today? This is what we have seen. Who is a relative? Common problems amongst relatives. Relatives can give good and bad advice. How can a believer deal with relatives? There is power in the name of Jesus. 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 There is power.